Hey guys, CB Super. So Dex McCluskey asked if we could figure out a way to have one smaller sphere orbit around a larger sphere. In order to do this, especially if you're gonna do this in 2D, is to use masking. So let's go ahead and jump into Fusion real quick. Now it is kind of a, not complex problem, but it can be kind of complex depending on how you wanna go about this. Now yes, you could do this in 3D, you could create all of this in 3D and that would work out great. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you how to do this using a really simple masking technique where you just turn the mask on and off. So what I've done is I've just taken this DaVinci logo and I used a motion path, this B-spline, and I've just created a motion path for the actual DaVinci logo. And if you're not familiar on how to do that, I have another video called Motion Paths. Please go check that video out. I'm not gonna be showing how to do it in this video since I've already gone over it, um, but I will link those videos so you guys can go check them out if you want. Now you'll notice that it is not traveling behind the planet at all. It's only moving in front of it. And in order to get it to go behind the planet, we're gonna have to use a masking technique. Obviously what we're gonna want is we're gonna want some kind of ellipse. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring in an ellipse and I'm gonna size it roughly about the size of this planet. I'm gonna come in just a little bit just to kind of make sure that we're getting as close as possible to this planet. And that looks pretty good. Now this works out pretty well because the planet is a sphere and it's pretty much a perfect sphere. Obviously this would be a little bit more difficult if maybe it was an asteroid or like some kind of different object that we were gonna go around. We would have to probably um, create our own mask around this object. But for what we have here, it's really easy. All right, so an easy way to kind of do this is decide which side of the rotation do you want the mask to turn on and which side do you want it to turn off. But in order to make sure that your mask is actually working, what I'll usually do is I'll set it somewhere here in between and then I'll just get this mask working. So this is the ellipse mask. I'm going to go ahead and rename it and I'm just going to call it Planet Mask just so I know what it is. All right, now where do I put it? So I just want to mask out not necessarily the planet side. I want it to mask out on this Da Vinci logo side. So I can kind of make myself a little bit more room here and I can bring this planet mask. The easiest way to do this is to just actually bring in another merge node. I'm just gonna wait till it lines up and once, um, if you move it around, you'll notice that the pipeline turns blue. That's good, that's where I want it to be. So I can just bring this in. I'm gonna bring in this background node and I'm gonna plug this background node into this merge. And then I'm going to drop the alpha all the way down. I actually want this, this I want all of this stuff that's up top here. This is the all of the nodes that operates this logo. I want all of that to actually be in the foreground, not the background. You'll see right now it's in the background, so it's in a yellow pipeline. And the background or the background color generator is in the foreground. So I just want to swap those two. So all I have to do is hit Command T, and that'll go ahead and swap them. And now I can bring this mask in and connect it right up into the merge node. You'll notice that what it did is it kind of turned it on on the inside, and that's not necessarily what I want. That's a little bit harder to do. Inside your merge node, make sure you have mask, apply mask inverted, and then in your mask, have the inverted box checked off. We don't want that. All right, but we do want to control the level of the mask and animate it. So if I turn the level off, you'll notice that it allows everything to be seen. And if I turn the level on, it hides it. So what we're going to want to do is when the when the logo is, is orbiting behind the planet, we want to have it turned on. So as you can see right now, it's turned on. So what we can do is we can actually just start the animation. We can go ahead and uh, start the keyframes right now. I'm going to go ahead and keyframe it so it's on. Now I'm going to move the planet until it's... All right, so right about here, it is now past the point of no return. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna give it a keyframe. I'm gonna go forward a couple frames just by using my right arrow. And then I'm gonna turn it off. All right, and so now I'm just gonna move the player head forward in time. Okay, and then right about there, now I can go ahead and give it another keyframe, go forward a couple frames, and then turn the level all the way back on. Effectually what we've done is we've turned the mask back on. And so now when the logo travels again, it will go ahead and go behind the planet. And just somewhere while it's over here, doesn't matter really when, we just don't want it to be intersecting with the mask when we turn the level on and off. Go forward a couple frames, turn it off, and then we can kind of go forward some more until the logo is already on the other side of the planet. Right about there will work. Go ahead and keyframe it again. 
a couple frames forward, turn it back on, and just repeat this process over and over again until you get however many rotations or orbiting rotations you want. Okay, so now I've finished that up. All right, now I can just come over here to the to the edit tab, let it cache, and then see what it looks like. Okay, so now we go ahead and watch it. Yeah, it looks pretty good. It's moving how we wanted it to orbit, and it is correctly moving behind the object when we want it to move behind the object, and it's moving in the front of the object when we want it to move in the front of the object. So this is just a really simple masking situation. It's really easy to do. And I could just throw in a bunch of these and I can have them rotating at different intervals. Of course, you could do this with like a nucleus or, you know, uh, protons and electrons and any kind, anything that needs to orbit around something else. This is just a really easy way to do that. So that's pretty much it for me, guys. If you have any questions, uh, leave them down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell notification, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.